Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch with a YouTube exclusive league with Death and Taxes. This list is 74 of the 75 cards that Evan Lewis played recently on Twitch. And the only change is just a card that I really enjoy playing around with, and that's Charming Prince. The rest of the deck is uh, pretty straightforward, uh, pretty much exactly what you'd see for a mono white list. Uh, I have gone for the same sideboard as well. I've been seeing a lot of combo in the uh, in the format recently, especially online. So having Leyline, having Mindbreak Trap is really nice. It's just a nice clean way to hopefully deal with combo. Uh, and then of course the main deck is just quite well skewed towards the mid-range plan that uh, there isn't too much to bring in in those matchups. Really just replacing some number of Thalias where we can uh, with cards like Council's Judgment, which are kind of just good catch-alls. But really looking forward to seeing how this goes. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, leave me a con comment if you do enjoy Death and Taxes content because I'd definitely love to do more. I think the deck is better positioned than most people currently think it is. Uh, and hopefully over the coming weeks or months, we can prove that with a few challenges uh, with the deck. So we'll see you in round one. Hey team, welcome back to Tooks on Twitch. We're in round one uh, with a, a pretty odd hand. Uh, it's pretty much a six with the Batter Skull. We have a Jano into Port into Timeless Dragon for a white source and then Recruiters to go and find stuff. I think it's just a little bit too, a little bit too clunky. I'm a big fan of keeping a DNT hand with at least like a turn one, turn two play. Uh, and as as good as Port is, it's obviously a lot better with a Vile. So I'm pretty happy to mulligan into a hand with something like a Mum and Athalia or a uh, Vile into, into like Stoneforge or, or something similar. Okay, that's pretty great. Pretty happy to keep this. Uh, and just bottom the second, Thalia. I think having the three lands is really key. Uh, double Swords uh, is pretty good in this current metagame, especially against a deck like Delva, so second Thalia is more than fine. Also just having the basics is really really nice. Put this down here. Okay. I believe Seatuck is a Maverick player, so this is going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Thalia is pretty nice at potentially hitting uh, an opposing Green Suns. I think two Thalias in play is much better for us uh, and a pretty big downside for our opponent. Second Caracas is pretty rough. I kind of just want to keep making drops. I don't want to play the Caracas to bait out like a Wasteland here. I'd rather most likely just keep playing my basics. happy to allow this. I mean, things like Silver Library, Green Suns, all really heavily taxed by uh, the mana here. But if they play a Knight here, I'm pretty happy to Caracas their Thalia and then just Swords this. Hmm. That's pretty interesting, though. They're down to three cards. So if I play Caracas here, uh, play Stoneforge, get Kaldra, that's obviously pretty great. I don't really want to throw the Stoneforge into removal. And I kind of want to also keep this Thalia in play. If I play the Caracas this turn and don't Swords the Knight, they most likely Wasteland it, but... That would... Hmm... I actually don't mind just playing Stoneforge here. Kaldra is just such a nice threat. That it really forces them 
to have the removal. Maverick typically doesn't play Sejiri step either, so allowing the knight to untap doesn't mean I've opened myself up to getting uh, hit by some sort of protection spell. Uh, I'm pretty okay just allowing this. I don't mind keeping Nathalia in play because it is taxing my opponent. This could be a prismatic ending. Okay. Hmm. I could clear the board here. Trading Thalia's as well just allows me to uh, potentially draw into a two mana spell next turn and play that while also holding up swords for this knight. Okay. I don't mind Charming Prince here just to scry and make sure I'm not drawing two lands. Uh, bottom, bottom. Okay. Attack, put Urion into hand. Um, and I probably just want to be able to Urion next turn, so I'm not going to Wasteland here. I think the extra mana source is better for me. Questing Beast is fine, as we do have this Caracas. Which I probably do just want to hold up here. Obviously if they have like a Wasteland, it's pretty tough. If they wasteland Caracas, we Caracas the Questing Beast, they recast it. Could play Spirit this turn, hold up Caracas. Could also just jam Yurion. I don't mind playing Yurion here and just uh, getting some value off this Charming Prince. Bottom, put this on top. Oh, they had the wasteland. It's pretty good. Might just have to be Jide 
and hope that we can block with the Urion on the questing beast, they get pro, and that potentially we attack in the following turn. But maybe they're like a little bit uh, taken about their endurance. Okay. It's definitely pretty annoying. So we can block here, get pro, attack with this as well, we get a two. Hmm. I think Caracas off the top is probably just the best draw because it allows us to Caracas the Questing Beast, equip Jade Swing and Attack, and then uh, put the Jade on a blocker. Hmm. I could also go to one, correct? I could keep the Yorion around, potentially. Uh, of course, they can get protection with the- I totally forgot about the reach. Yeah, that's a big one. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to cut on some number of Thalias, bring in the Council's Judgments. Uh, I like the Containment Priest and the Rest in Peace and the Graft Digger's Cage. I don't mind it for Green Suns. Uh, the other Thalia can come out. Probably some number of just like one spirit. It's probably going to be it. I don't think it's worth bringing in the Ley Lines for or the Peacekeeper. Yeah, I think if that's if obviously the line there is to uh, Yuri unblock the questing beast, untap, and then probably put in the Kaldra, uh, and also attack with it with an equip Jude. Uh, pretty happy to keep this. Has a lot of interaction, which is nice. I don't really have a great hand for uh, mana denial, so I'm pretty happy just to allow this Hierarch to be on the board. And then try to hit the threats with things like Swords of Plushes.
Probably just gonna get a Skyclave with this Recruiter, seeing we already have a Flick Wisp. I could go for a second Recruiter, but I think that Skyclave here is fine. Skyclave just makes it pretty awkward for them to put a, a threat onto the board. And if they don't deploy a threat, then we have Flickwist to recruit the uh to flicker the recruiter, of course. I think here we just want to Caracas the Thalia, attack in for one and then Wisp the Recruiter. I don't mind just getting Stoneforge here. Just to start really making these actual threats. So they have four unknown cards, three unknown cards. Hmm. Holding up endurance potentially. Pretty sweet. I actually think I should have just got another uh, Flick Wisp to, to be fair. Happy just to get you there. And I could cast it here. Even though it runs into Prismatic Ending, it kind of taps them out for the turn, which is quite nice. I don't want to attack into a uh, Endurance here either, especially when next turn I have Solitude. But there is a world where you keep the Jade and then cast an, an attack in the same turn to take them off uh, white mana here. Really hope to see like a green suns for collect oof. I think we're in a pretty good position even if they do get rid of the Jade. Especially to have Solitude. Play a Caracas and then just equip Jade. This is fine. I 
I assume they target no one. They want the lands in the bin, and they probably don't want to give us the extra uh, swords to plow shares. Okay. More than happy to see this. Ooh, Lion Sash? Sash is pretty great here. I can also hold it up with Stoneforge, which is nice, or hold up Solitude. See what they attack with. Just the Insurance. I think here I'm just going to Solitude the Endurance in response to the Exalted Triggers. Uh, I kind of like just holding up the Lion Sash here. So I don't want to attack with the uh, Solitude once I Caracas the Thalia. Okay, happy to take this. Hmm. I think we just allow this because there is double wasteland. And they can just get a fetch back anyway, so. I don't think I care about the Thalia that much. I'd probably rather just have the extra uh, mana for the Lion Sash. Fetching in response. Okay. Let me get rid of the mum. Let's probably get rid of the windswept heats here. Probably pretty happy just to chump here with the Stoneforge Mystic. We also have the uh Yorion to think about as well. Hmm. It's actually a pretty bad draw because I 
do you want to have access to things? I probably just want to hold up Lion Sash more than put Yorion into hand. But I probably could cast the Vial and then hold up Yorion. Hold up this for one. I don't think it's too late just yet. Could also attack with the Solitude if I want here. Trade with the Remnant. I guess the Remnant's not doing any much anyway. Hmm. No, I'd probably rather keep the Solitude on board just because of Yorion over two turns. And like Endurance would be pretty bad. Scrib Ranger. Okay. Now that's going to be an issue over a few turns. Maybe it's, the attack with Solitude was worth it. I didn't really think of them having a flyer. Just while we could have gotten in. And at least like the three three life is, is obviously quite nice. Hmm. Okay. Pretty happy here just to block with a Skyclave. The, rec the Recruit is just a little bit too good. does allow me to flicker the solitude, which is kind of nice. Could also flicker Recruiter and then get Charming Prince. I don't mind that, it's just an extra body as well. Hmm. Can't play the Grafty's Cage because of the Thalia, so we will just pass here.
No great attacks, which is good for us. I will put Vile to three here. Nothing great to do. I'd rather just hold up the mana for Lion Sash. I guess there's no real reason to eat anything, so... Two, four, six. I think if I'm blocking, I'm not winning, so I'd rather just try to rip a land for Yorion and then be able to Solitude. I'm gonna keep that at three. It's actually a tough one because there's a world where I want to see. So if they attack with, if we take out, say, we don't care about the Scrib Ranger, we probably care about just them going wide. Like I'm trying to see if we can flicker Solitude and then end step in their turn, it comes back to deal with something. But I think if they just go wide, then we just take too much. Yeah. I think it's definitely the Scrib. Just because of it being a flyer and also being able to have shenanigans with Dried Arbor. And then potentially just take out a 2 2. Although, yeah, Scrib is just annoying. And then this takes out a 2-2. Two, two. Funnily enough, going after their mana dogs early on um, would have been pretty sweet because they had like forest dried up a wasteland for a long time and didn't have access to white mana. Still happy to keep Vile at three here. I don't mind rip on this board. No great attacks, we'll just pass. Because if they have any form of removal, it's just game. Because we can block the two biggest with two creatures and they attack with one and one, which is two. Good math. 
Okay. Pretty happy to hold back just for one more turn. We will deal with the knight because that does find Caracas. I guess that's a reason to put up the vial, but... Just dealing with that knight is really nice. I think I'm still happy with three, just because of Flickwisp, Skyclave, Recruiter. We only have one Recruiter left in the deck, sorry, one R. I think it's too greedy again to be able to attack here. Because then if they just deal with one creature, we're just... Oh, I guess we're not dead because we have lifelink. So I guess we can attack here with Yorion. I guess this does turn on Thalia, which is pretty annoying. Yeah. Which means I probably just block with the Flicker Wisp. And then we get to attack with one Solitude next turn, hold back Yurion. But yeah, a little bit, a little bit greedy there. I should have thought about that a little bit more. Oh, they drew the Krakus. Oh, that's pretty good for us. I mean, we get to attack. A Krakus. Turn this. Exile these two. Out. They have the Caracas there, so let's go for Ramanat and the Illusion token. Mm -hmm. No, I should take out the bird because they can. Yeah, attack for lethal in the air if they Caracas the Yorion. I thought they would have attacked me, but obviously not. I should have this up to five, like, I really should, but I'm just really, really wanting that. Yeah, especially with the crackers there, like, it just makes sense to start up upticking it. I will attack... Because they're, they're definitely going to Caracas it, so I might as well get in that extra damage. OK. 
Okay. Thankfully, endurance doesn't change too much. Take this up. Sadly, time might just get us. is fine. I get to give pseudo vigilance here. is too nice there um, it would have been a really interesting game three for sure um, but yeah clips there giving the win which is really 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 nice um, big shout out big shout out would have been really interesting as well ah oh, of course um, I mean, we want to be fast, but like, is there a way to do that? <sighs> this is going to be really tough. Yeah, I think I have to like go for Caldra just early on and see if that can stick. Like Mum into Stoneforge is what I want. Mum into Stoneforge. Uh, I'm actually happy to go for Vile here as they started off with Verdant. Which does play into time a little bit, but I think that's okay. Uh, I don't want to play out the Stoneforge here because I want to have Mum online first.
Token away. This is Green Suns for two. We want a vial in response. Oh, they hit Collector Oof. Just for time constraints, I'm pretty happy to get Solitude here and then to Solitude pitching uh, Council's Judgment. I think over time it's going to deal more damage. I also just want to get rid of this black source to turn off our Plague Engineer. I think next time we're just going to recruit a for Flick Wisp. Three mana. I can't six here either because of Mum. Ramen up, sure. They have Prismatic Ending, I assume. Go to get pro green. All right. Uh, always no. Okay. Let's attack wrist. Um, I think here we just want to go for Recruiter into, uh, Charming Prince, Charming Prince, uh, Exile Flicker Wisp, and Flicker Wisp the Caldra.
Okay. Cradle. I will, yes, because of the solitude in hand. Just going to go pro green, just to make sure it gets through. Six. <sighs> Next time we can probably just attack with everything nearly. Could have also put Yorian into hand, that's just incorrect not to do that. Just a uh, time definitely got to me. pretty good here. What if we attack with everything here? I don't think I can even think. I, I, I don't think we can go for Yorion because of time. I think we just have to hope that it, they can block three. So one, two, three. Uh, and then they still only take that amount. I think I'm just going to six here. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything with this recruiter of the guard. Probably just pro on the germ token, pro green, and then try to get through. Oof. Oh, I think that's just going to be it. Pro green, get through. Ah!
Oh my gosh. We'll see you in game two. Hey team, welcome back to round two. We have a turn one vial with double port, so I don't mind keeping this because even if the vial doesn't resolve, we have a turn two player just porting our opponent. Uh, and then we just have a white sauce at the top, which is pretty high. I'm pretty happy to take that risk. But obviously a pretty risky one. I'm typically a player that likes to just make sure I am starting off with a hand where I can cast everything in my hand, but having a vial resolve is quite nice. Uh, but of course, prismatic ending changes things up a little bit as well. Oh, cavernous souls. Okay. If this is a goblin lackey, this changes a whole lot. Merfolk. Interesting. Well, pretty nice to not have a turn one vial from them. That is huge, especially seeing we have turn two port. Skyclay is pretty nice. Pretty happy just to pass here. All right, we'll tap this down. And yield until end step. The only thought here is if they play a uh, blue land and pass, I might activate Violin end step, just in case they're like a version with Stifle. I'd love to be able to grab that out of their hand. There's definitely some advantages and disadvantages of uh, activating Vile. Because it does give your opponent also the information that we don't have a one drop in hand. And there's really no point of doing anything here, but I might as well. I, I, I do like activating it as much as possible within reason. To just make my opponent think that, oh, just because they're activating it doesn't mean they actually have something. Wasteland here would be huge. Crack isn't too bad as well, but it's a, a white source. Um, so here I think I just want to keep porting my opponent. Uh, just keep them... Hmm. We're definitely putting in Stoneforge off the Vile. I don't want to put this into Force of Will range. The, the uh, interesting thing is, do I want to recruit here over Port? But uh, I don't mind keeping my opponent just down to one creature a turn. And next turn, if they have land two drop, that's more than fine. Cleese and they tap out. They can't hold up something like Dismember. They could have Merfolk, Merfolk Trickster or another Flash creature here, but Let's see how that plays out. Hold up the Krakus too. Act like we have Swords to Plowshares, potentially. Or if they play like a Legendary Lord, maybe. Interesting. Okay. It's just going to be a Lord. And uh, this is actually pretty huge because it's a Lord that's been printed that isn't double blue. A little bit easier to cast of cards like Wasteland. Speaking of... And Wasteland here isn't too bad either. It just means that we... Um, I guess it does, in a way, make Stoneforge a little bit worse because it means we can't put on uh, Cauldron next unless we draw a white source. So the thought here is potentially just putting in Lion Sash and using the white to eat the Wasteland. I don't mind that either. Turns a Sash into a 2-2. And then I probably just want to tick this up to three because we have the Recruiter and the Skyclave. Being able to just recruit into Wisps is really nice against the deck that primarily is on the ground. Um, this might be a, a point in time where I'm happy to actually move away from the Stoneforge line and just go for Recruiter lines. There's also a world where we get to, if they attack aggressively, we can block, they put in another Lord and potentially something else, and then we can Skyclave, but they need double Lord to make this a 3-3, three, three, so... Uh, we're actually looking pretty good here. I am going to put this up to three. Also, don't want to forget about Yurion, so we'll put that down here. Solitude. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I think because of this, I'm happy to attack with the Sash. Because 
because although right now we have our opponent stifled on mana, I do want to get in a position where they can't just go wide after hitting a land drop, land drop. Silvergill Adapt Revealing a Master. Okay. This is Sacrifice a Merfolk Counter Target Non Creature Spell. That's going to be fine. So there's no great attacks here for my opponent, which is nice because it means we can just recruit her. And I think I'm happy here to recruit her for. Uh. Flick Wisp. I could also put in the Skyclave, take out the Silvergill, and then just keep attacking. I don't mind that either. I don't think we're in any sort of rush, but I do like just keeping the beatdown going. But you could recruit it there for Flick Wisp and then hold up Flick Wisp the whole time. It's just nice to play around something like Dismember if they potentially have it. Um, by not holding up the the wisp, uh, this for now is not going to go up. But going to five is getting uh, a little bit better because of our ability to put in both Yorion and Solitude. Just going to let this fly. Um, so if I tap down a cavern, they most likely float the mana to activate Mutavolt, which I don't mind, because I don't mind solituding Mutavolt, potentially, just to take them off mana, but we'll see what happens. I think, sh seeing that they showed a Lord, uh, I could also tap down the Mutavolt to make them play the Lord and then be able to solitude that, but a lot of different lines. I think we're in a really tight position right now, which is nice. Okay. Uh, has indestructible as long as you control at least two other merfolk. Whenever it attacks, you draw a card. Other merfolk you control have ward one. Okay. No attacks. It's pretty good for us. Let's put in recruiter, and then I think I want Flickwist, but I could potentially just go for another Skyclave and take this out, and then just attack again. I actually don't mind that. Like, I don't want to give them a 2-2. Two -two. I kind of like just keep beating down and making them only have 1-1s. One so, Skyclave here is pretty nice. Let me get a quick think. Yeah, I like Skyclave. I kind of like Skyclave uh, with the vial on the stack and then tick the vial up to 4. And you can kind of see how uh, how important it was to have this vial in play because other than the Krakus, it's turn six. We haven't hit our white source, so getting a little bit fortunate here. Uh, now I'm happy to probably tap down the Mutavolt. It also means they just kind of have a two-two or I guess three-three blocker, and we can't take them off blue here. So happy to take them off the creature. Okay, so we know they have a Lord, which we do have Solitude for, which is fantastic. 
True name does put a bit of a... Spanner in the works, but... Double Lord's also pretty strong for them. Hmm... File up to five. Another Solitude would be pretty huge. Planes isn't too bad either. They have three cards left. Could also just put in Yorion and Flicker all three. That's not too bad either. Um, they would get a 2-2 two, two and a 3-3. Three, three. Which is just bigger than the two, smaller than the two four fours anyway, so I actually don't mind that play. Oh, I could have actually solituded one. Yeah, my bad. I should have solituded first. Actually, I still can, I think. Because I can, uh... Put in Yurion, and then trigger on the stack, we can cast this, pitching probably Thalia here. <gasps> no, I did this all wrong. I did this all wrong. <laughs> I think we're in a position where it doesn't matter, but uh, we're all good, because we can't, of course, target this with the trigger on the stack. That's just incorrect. Um, so let's take out. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I, I think there. what I should have done there is uh, evoked Solitude and then with the trigger and the stack I should have Yurioned um, to then get it back and then, yeah. Anyway. Uh, here we're probably just taking out some number of Thalia uh, and then bringing in some number of Council's Judgment. I don't mind Peacekeeper as just a make sure they don't uh, just go over us really quickly because I think Merfolk's way of winning is just turn one... Threat, turn two, Lord, turn three, Lord, potentially, turn four, Lord, Lord. Uh, which sounds like a lot of Lords, but they play a lot of Lords. So I think if anything, it can be something like Mum into Peacekeeper. Also, True Name can be of an issue. So being able to build out our board in a way that favors us and then just get rid of Peacekeeper is pretty nice as well. So uh, Containment Priest is pretty interesting as well. I don't mind Priest, just because it also turns on Flickwisp as a removal spell. Uh, and if we can control their mana, which I think we can do a lot better than them, then their vials obviously get a lot worse as well. So uh, these two are probably more maybe cards, but I think they have some relevance in the matchup over Thalia. First Strike Thalia is fine, but it only takes one Lord to make a creature another Lord of 3-3, which kind of uh, de-emphasizes the effect of First Strike as a 2-1 creature. But Double Planes would be pretty nice. Planes Port would be nice. A few nice things here. Uh, and this hand is still pretty fine. Like, we have a removal spell in Ajano, which is sweet. We have Peacekeeper if needed. We have Recruiter to keep going in Jide to take over the game late game. So, happy to keep. Stoneforge is pretty great there. It's just a two drop play. Probably pretty happy to get Kaldra. Just because it forces them to have something like a daze or some sort of interaction spell. Silvergill's going to be fine. They reveal a lot of Atlantis. Solitude's pretty great, let's be honest. Uh, I could get Battle Skull because it's a little bit easy to cast, but I think just making them half have an answer to the uh, Stoneforge is 
where I want to be. And honestly, I think already having the Jade is quite nice as well. But I feel like Merfolk is just a, a really enjoyable matchup, especially at an FNM level. Um, obviously the competitiveness has kind of dropped off for the deck, but uh, for any player who just enjoys playing Merfolk, it's still a great deck to play. It's just tough because there's so many great cards now um, in other decks that it's hard to be on the blue plan and just creature beats. Like, especially when you look at Murktide region, like would you rather have a, a Fault maybe a 4-4 Merfolk or like a 7-7 Flying Dragon. No great blocks because we know about the Lord. They probably put it in here before damage. Now this feels like Dismember? Okay, that's gonna be fine. Now I probably don't mind being on the Peacekeeper plan and then getting to a stage where we can just recruit her for Flick Wisps uh, and then go from there. I believe potentially Merfolk Trickster is a way out of this. Tap target creature and opponent controls, it loses all abilities until end of turn. Hmm, creatures can't attack. I, I don't think that's ability, I think it's like a state-based action or a state-based effect. So potentially it doesn't work here. Okay. Oh, another dismember. Question here is, is do I want to take out a Lord of Atlantis here? This is going to put something in. Uh, if it is the one that says like sacrifice, no, it's fine because solitude is only a uh, a creature spell, so I think this is fine. I guess the Ward 1 is a 3-drop spell, so I don't have to worry about that either. They have two cards left. Um, I think I kind of have to Solitude here. Otherwise, we'd go to 10, we untap, we play Recruit, and we get Flicker Wisp. Unless we draw a white source, we can have anything. So I think Solitude this turn, then Ojano the, this Lord next turn. I guess we also have Yuri under pitch, but... That's actually pretty interesting. I could just take this, go to 10, and then next turn... I guess we can't put Yuri into hand and also hold up Ojano. So I think it's Solitude this turn, pitching Recruiter, and then hopefully we just keep making land drops and potentially get to either Kaldra or Creature plus Jude to take this game back over. They could still have days. They could have allowed both those creatures because they had the dismembers. Take out the attacking lord because it just saves on four damage, which is quite nice. Wasteland would save us three damage here. I guess two damage because we'd deal with the master before damage. It's like Mother of Runes would be pretty sweet. Spirit. Hmm. To 
5, 8, 11. So if we play Spirit and Jude this turn, and then draw a land next turn, we can equip Jude attack and also hold up a Jano. Um, I kind of feel like just to stay in this game, I have to hold up a Jano on this master, just to save an extra three, four, five damage. Save five damage or play the Spirit actually an interesting choice. 6, 7, 8, Mutavolt, 9, 10, 11, we go to 3. We then attack with Spirit. I guess if they have like Vile and True Name, that just, we can't beat that anyway. Um, so I'm not going to consider that. We then have counters, hmm, but 4 life or Neg 2, Neg 2 doesn't save us anyway. So I think I just have to go for a Jano here. This is exactly what I was kind of talking about, where they have like threat, Lord, Lord, Lord. And we just have to kind of keep some of it at bay. Like maybe Batterskull is better because next turn, if we draw a land, we could just gone for Batterskull. The tight shape enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, target land becomes an island for as long as tight shape reveals on the battlefield. Okay. That is fine. Activate. They have one card left. There's a world where they also do an attack with the Lord, because that actually, if they, if they if they sniff out a Jano and they do an attack with the Lord, sure they don't get two in, but they kind of get like, put us in an awkward spot. I think this just does it. Like even if we untap and draw, I don't know what it, what it has to be, but it's looking pretty poor here. Hmm. Uh, because we can, yeah, no. too slow. Uh, I don't mind my boarding. I think I'm happy just running this back. Obviously, the mums would be super sweet. Um, to see, uh, and also just some sort of removal. Like the solitude is fine, but losing the recruiter is kind of a three for one, if not more, because you're probably going to flick the recruiter as well. Yeah, mum, super solid here. Maybe the keep on the draw as well is just too slow. Maybe that's a Something I should have uh, thought about. All right, let's do this. On the play, which is great, of course. Show Yurion. Um, a pretty awkward hand, like no removal either. I'm pretty happy to mulligan this. Uh, this is much better. I'll definitely keep this and probably just bottom the sash. Get to go turn one vial, turn two stoneforge. And I think we're in a position where having Urion and double solitude, we're probably just ticking this vial all the way up to five as soon as possible. Curse catch is fine. See what we draw off the top, but there's not too many things that would make me not cast stoneforge mystic here. 
I guess that's that's pretty good as well. Uh, this means I'm actually going to get a Jete with the first Stoneforge Mystic if this resolves. It might make my opponent less likely to kill this one, which means that next turn we can uh, activate Stoneforge, hold priority, put in Stoneforge off file, get Kaldra. Do they tap out? Because there's a world where they have Dismember, but also want to make sure they have uh, Mother covered. So if we actually activate the Vial in end step and don't put in anything, they might just Dismember this before we get to untap. No, they're just going to go for Master. Okay. This makes them want to attack, but... Like, if we Solitude the Master here... Then we just block. We're in a pretty great position. We're already in a pretty great position with the Stoneforge Mystic, but... Like, are we getting to a stage where we can cast these? Probably not. I think this is going to be fine, because two Solitudes take out, like, the Master, and then we get to take out the Curse Catcher, so it's kind of a two for two anyway. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that trade. There's no point using the Vial here. Recruiter, fantastic. Uh, so one thing we want to do here is, uh, if they have removal up, you want to activate hold priority, put in Stoneforge, uh, in case you put in Stoneforge and then with the trigger on the stack, they kill this one. You can put in the Jide, but um, it's a little bit worse. So let's go. Vial. Yes. Stoneforge. Yes. Caldra. Now who's the beat down? Also having the recruiter here to potentially flicker the uh, Kaldra off a of Flick Wisp is really nice. Really good spot here. Like, they could potentially dismember this, because I believe that the Neg gets around kind of the indestructibility. Uh, maybe not. I'm not too sure. I think it does. Well, I, I think we're going to see what happens. No. Okay. They're just going to go with Master. Yeah. Pretty happy to attack, hold up Recruiter, and also just hold up Jide off the Stoneforge Mystic. No great attacks for them. Because even if they spend their turn dealing with this, we get to untap and uh, attack with with uh, today. 
Lords fine. Wasteland would be good for them. The good wasteland is potentially off the Caracas. Yeah, tough spot for my opponent for sure. Nice. Really nice to get there. Um, Merfolk can be scary. Like on the right draws, Merfolk can be scary. But here we saw kind of the issue with the deck is that they played a turn three Lord Pass. Like the non-vile start, so obviously a lot uh, less scary. Uh, but pretty nice to get there. So we update our score. And hey, we'll see you in match three. Hey team, welcome back to round three. We have a pretty sweet hand. Like I don't think it gets much better. It's pretty. Uh, we're gonna keep this. Just gonna keep this up here. Oh, ancient tomb defense grid. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully getting something into play next turn. Uh, sorry, two turns down the line. We're hopefully starting off with uh, Thali or Spirit if we get a turn, but it's probably not likely. I'm going to assume this is mono red. Hmm. Okay. Now this is actually a tough one. I'm definitely going to go with Port here, and then it's between Thalia or Spirit. And I think here I'm just going to go with Thalia. I think Thalia taxing is a little bit better, but of course like an Echo line is a little bit tough if they find that, so... Let's quickly... Hmm... I think it's Thalia, but it's, it's definitely tough. I feel like Thalia stops them from going off to an extent, but Spirit kind of stops the end game of Echo. Uh, and they obviously have four mana already in play. But I, I, I don't mind Thalia here. Just taxing every single LED and Lotus Petal as well is quite nice. Well, it's definitely a tough matchup. This is a matchup where we have a lot of sideboard cards for, thankfully. Like, the traps are, are not as great with the defense grids, but there is some play with, like, Flick Wisp or Cathar Commando taking them out potentially, then be able to mind break trap. But, uh, pr like, very happy to be able to get uh, Thali into play. Alright, so they discard a bonus round. And they find a Burning Wish. Which is pretty nice. They are going to Burning Wish. Which I assume is going to be Echo. Which isn't too bad here. Like we do lose the, the like these two, but these are pretty much dead anyway. I guess the the swords could hit a uh, a Bergy, and the Stoneforge is good pressure in uh in Caldra, but there are hands where I wouldn't mind getting another six. Like being able to hit like a Wasteland potentially, take him off the Volk. And if they do Echo here, uh, it's at least one for the LED, and then at least one for the Echo. So. Oh, we actually get a turn? Wow, I didn't see that coming. Being able to hold up our spirit here is just huge. And we draw Wasteland. Take him off red. I don't think I really care about the recruiter here. It's just going to be pretty much tax them four or three. One through Thalia, one through Wasteland, two through Port.
Okay, they discard the Echo, that's fine. Play the Bloodstained Maya. They could still Burning Wish for some sort of sweeper effect, I guess. The nice thing here as well with them being at 9 is that if they don't go off this turn we get to put in Stoneforge, go and get Kaldra. Next turn attack for 7 which is lethal. So thankfully here we actually just have lethal on board. Caldra. There's literally nothing my opponent can do, so pretty happy there to get game one. All right, uh, so we definitely want the traps. The ley lines I don't mind just because they turn off uh, Echo. Grafdigger's Cage is interesting. I don't believe it stops the Horn because they exile the cards from the graveyard. Oh, sorry, from the library, and then you play them from exile. Uh, surgicals like. I think Surgical could just do more than other things. Uh, Peacekeeper is interesting if they have like an empty line, but isn't great. I don't mind the swords. Like it's it's tough because like probably the the Solitudes we do have swords for Bergy if really needed, but we also have Caracas, so I could see some number of swords coming down as well. Skyclaves are, are still pretty good. They hit a lot of things, especially hitting uh, Defense Grid. Timeless Dragon's just a bit, like, uh, Charming Prince as well, just like not really what I want to be doing, kind of like the, the flex of the deck. Uh, I could take out Chite. Uh, I don't mind still having the four Stoneforge Mystics, because just finding an early, early culture is just so good. Rest in Peace is pretty strong, um, but still not great. Graph does stop Echo, which might just be enough to warrant it as like a maybe card. But, I mean, we already have the Ley Lines as well. I don't want to go overboard with Graveyard Hate. Hmm. The only real situation where Surgical is good is if they discard a card to Horn, and then we get to Surgical it, because otherwise uh, they're probably going to obviously play in a way where Surgical isn't great against an Echo line. So I could see Surgical coming out. I could see Peacekeeper as a just-in-case for, for, uh, for Empty. But if they're empty emptying, they're probably emptying on turn, like, one or two, so Peacekeeper could just be too slow. But in that case, like if we have it in the opening hand, it's it's okay, but probably isn't gonna come down. Um hmm. I could just see like Council's Judgment. Mums also aren't the greatest, but they do protect our bears from things like chain lightning or grape shot. I think I might just go with this kind of plan and then see what happens. Find a little bit more of that deck as well. They're playing bonus round, which is interesting. Hmm. Like I could see like the extra sash for the Peacekeeper. See how this plays. See how this goes. I think Peacekeeper is a little bit meh, but you never know. <laughs> it's a pretty good hand. Leyline, and then we also have just like Great Bears and also uh, Stoneforge. Potentially Batterskull gets there against an empty hand as well, so we're definitely going to keep this put in Leyline. Wow. Probably could have let on the Caracas in case they have Bergy, but I kind of want them to play a Bergy if they do have one. Ooh, that means they probably have nothing this turn, okay. Uh, because we have the Leyland, I'm not scared of Echo, so let's go with Thalia here. The next turn I can probably play Stoneforge and also Caracas. Great. 
Grape shot. Okay. Uh, I do like getting pressure into play, so I'm going to go with Stoneforge here. They've already used a grape shot as well. I don't want to yield just in case they play Bergy into spells. But it looks like Leyline has done a lot this game already. Because it's turn four and they haven't gone off, so I feel like Leyline has kept their hand at bay. But hey, let me know what you think about my sideboarding, because I'd love to get some feedback. I think it's it's on the right plan, but it's probably a little bit loose. A storm opponent also taking time to think and count is also scary as well. All right. I still think we're just going for Kaldra here. Potentially hard cast Horn. I think Horn is five mana. Okay. Oh, wish. Okay. Storm count five. Four manner in pool. Relay. Okay. During your next turn, you may play that card. Okay. Well, there's empty. But thankfully for the uh, Metamorphose, we have Spirit next turn. Wasteland would be great. Um, they did get Burning Wish. They also have Bergy, so let's hold that up. So let's go with Spirit here. And then hold up Krakus. Okay, they don't draw, thankfully. They just get the mana. A lot of mana, let's be honest. Bonus round also copies. Yes, they don't actually go towards Storm, which is very relevant with uh, Empty here. Bergy, sure. 
I think just in response to this, I'm going to bounce and then just six just to save some time. Got a lot of time, but also nice to give my opponent as much time as they want. A lot of mana, but thankfully not drawing here. Oh, tendrils. Yeah, they could just end tendrils. Nice. Very cool. Alright. Hmm. Does this change anything? Not really, to be fair. Like, I don't have too much experience with the matchup that I'm pretty happy just to run this back and just keep to the same sort of uh, thoughts we had for the other games. Show sure, Yorion. Uh, it is a one lander, but it does have Leyline into Vile into Spirit, so I actually don't mind keeping this. We get to play three cards on turn one, which is pretty nice. Opponent's gone to six cards. So one, one thing I did skimp on in the sideboard here is actually uh, Deafening Silence and Aetherthorn Canonist, which I don't think is correct, especially for leagues. I think I should be playing those. Would be pretty nice here. Spirit. Guess we play Grafdigger's Cage, hold up Mum, and then just pass. Maybe the swords are just uh, something that I need to have on turn one that I should be playing all four. My sort of thought is that my creatures typically make Bergy a lot worse, but maybe not. This feels like a relay. Burning Wish. Reforge, yikes. Sadly, one turn too late. I will put in Mum. And then we do have traps to draw into, which is kind of nice. No. <laughs> Guess we can hope that we get another turn, but it's not looking great. Wow, bonus round there as well. I 
The tough thing about Surgical as well is that if we have Leyland in play, then Surgical is just kind of a dead draw. But now they have just uh, like Wish or Burning Wish into Tendrils. I think it has to be Burning Wish. I think Wish is an instant potentially. Nice, even the defense grid, so I couldn't have a trap. Tough. Definitely uh, combat decks doing what combat decks do, so. Not too much to say other than we'll see you in round four. Hey team, up against JD for round four. Uh, we are on the draw with pretty slow hand, but we have turn one mum, turn two port, turn three recruiter, which isn't too bad. Uh, it also just has four lands, which is fantastic. Two of them kind of being spells, so I don't mind keeping this. Pretty hard to throw this kind of hand away, even though it doesn't have a two drop. But ports, I guess, is kind of my two drop. All right, good luck to my opponent. Not too sure what they're on. Now we do. Probably Painter. Probably going to be Painter. I'm going to six here, but I, I think in like a competitive tournament, I wouldn't just because of Spirit Guide, Fable, wow. Uh, I was going to say just because of Solitude, but I guess we get to tap down the Saga here, which is pretty nice. Hmm. The big turn is next turn. Like if they play a turn, the port isn't as great on Saga because they can just still make a, a token in response. So I think it is going to be Recruiter. Just not sure what for. But if they play like a Painter out this turn, then I have to go for Solitude. Um, I don't really need to block this. Like, I don't really want to put the mum into some sort of position where she can get destroyed. Like, I've seen some decks playing, like, Chain Lightning in the main deck, or a, a Bolt here and there. Skyclave's pretty cool. Skyclave takes out the Fable. Which I don't mind. It's tough because next turn, uh, Saga gets the Grindstone and they need five mana. Uh, float one, two, three, four. Uh, Goblin makes five. I don't mind actually Field of Ruin here. I think Field is pretty strong on the Saga. Also takes him off that piece. Now we're just passing. I think the, the converted mana cost of this is three. I actually don't mind seeing if they have a removal spell. I know that we said before that I wouldn't, but the damage does add up, and it's getting to the stage where they might just start trying to get there with... Uh, creatures?
Okay. Hmm. I think you are just like Skyclave. Uh, on the Fable. We have more outs to the reflection. Also, having a 2 2 with protection is quite nice. But they have a lot of mana here. Okay, I don't really care about the pedal. Maybe I do. It's like a fury. Uh, I think I've actually should I should have responded to the fury because now they can actually tap and, and give protection. I should have uh yeah definitely screwed that up because now in response they can of course copy it whereas I should have given protection at the very top. cards left. Hmm. It's kind of got to be like Recruiter for... Uh, Charming Prince? Actually, yeah, Charming Prince. Oh my gosh. Little misclick. Uh, all good. Let's look at the board. I like the council's judgments. I like the... Hmm. Craftiger's Cage does stop uh, the goblin creatures from being able to put stuff into play. Which is pretty interesting. Like, I don't mind having some sort of graveyard hate. I don't think I want the ley line specifically. But I don't mind these. Um, Sashes are still fine, but I could see just going down to one. Skyclaves are great. Flickwisps are great. Thalia is still okay. I could see some amount of spirits, like two spirit, two Thalia. I don't mind. Yeah. Timeless Dragon still fine. It's just a big creature as well. Pretty nice hand. Happy to keep this. Turn one plane to hold up sword. Turn two stone forge. Probably off Caracas to hide the wasteland. Turn three wasteland and Caldra is probably where we're going to be looking towards. Opponent's gone to six cards. Pretty happy to pr probably get rid of this just now, just to clear the board. I think we have enough outs to uh, painter, thankfully, through Recruiter. Oh, Port's actually quite nice. I think Port here is better than Caracas. Also quite nice that if they have a removal spell for the Stoneforge here, it's one less that they can have the Recruiter in response to Flickwist trying to flicker it.
Would love to see a saga come down this turn. We'll get Kaldra and Wasteland. Wasteland hitting a uh, saga as well is just so much value. Nice. Okay. Wow, that's the whole turn. Happy to attack Wasteland the Saga. I really need to if they play like a play like a painter now. Engineer. Okay, that's gonna be fine. Gonna recruit her for solitude. Honestly, I could solitude now uh, to stop them from being able to pyroblast, but mm. so if I allow them to untap, they have three mana. They have to sacrifice an artifact to this. So they kind of have to use two mana, I guess, if with the current board state to get back the painter, which leaves him with my, one open. So I don't mind just solituding now. I'd rather not give them that option. Which means I should have just done it post before combat to get that extra damage in with Stoneforge Mystics. That was definitely incorrect. Uh, happy just to run this back. Lion Sash is definitely interesting though, especially against the, uh, I think Sash is just better than potentially the extra Thalia. Could also see like a mum coming out, but mum being able to protect something like Stoneforge Mystic from an Abrade or a Bolt is pretty relevant. Yeah, I don't mind going down just to one Thalia. Show Yorion, thank you. Uh, yeah. Pretty, like, turn one Marmander, turn two Stoneforge, or Lion Sash if needed. Recruiter to find a, um, Solitude if needed as well. Also just have Lion Sash off the Stoneforge Mystic to potentially eat something that my opponent doesn't think about. Okay, a little bit scary, let's be honest. Hmm. 
Okay. Probably just naming Stoneforge, that's fine. Three cards left for my opponent. Hmm. I think I need to just go for Recruiter into uh, Solitude to not just die. And then we have uh, Lion Sash next turn. Lion Sash turning off the Goblin World is quite nice. I will play the field here, as it might be able to hit a... Uh, saga next turn. No great attacks, unfortunately. Discard, that's fine. Do they discard a grindstone? That's the interesting one. Next turn, I probably want to fable away the. F uh, sorry, Council's Judgment away the fable. Or potentially the needle and just start getting in with Cauldra. But we're also just making land drops, so. I think if we draw land next turn, it changes a bit. They also didn't cut discard anything. Fury. Okay. What do you want to kill? Hmm. At this stage, I probably don't care about the mum. Probably just red because of Pyroblast, I guess. But everything's blue, of course, so it doesn't really matter. No attacks. Okay. Happy to try to eat petal. They're going to try to welder it. Response, I'll eat it. I could attack with a Jide this turn, that's actually pretty solid. This is a 3-3, three, three, so they could double block. But then I get a lot. Eh. What's the best use of my time? Uh, 
I think it's just holding up the planes here, potentially. But judgment away the painter's servant does change a lot. Especially while they're tapped out. Oh, sorry, off the uh, welder. But maybe that's a mistake. Ah, so many little things. So many little things that come up. This is fine. Another servant's okay. Two cards left for them. Oh, Spirit Guide. One card left. Is it Bolt? Kind of has to be, right? Blast. Damn. Don't mind equip attack. And if they double block or something, we can solitude, which they probably don't expect, seeing as we did in solitude last turn. this. Oh my gosh. Yep. It's not too bad. Hmm. But it does change things a little bit. Guess we give them the reflections. Okay, so they only have mana, that's great for us. We just want to hold up one white here. Uh, I guess they can reflections potentially. No, but that's fine because then we can just solitude in response. Yeah, so now if we eat JIT, they try to make a copy, and then we want to. I think we want to evoke here. Maybe not. Maybe we actually want the Jade. Yeah, I don't mind that.
I do just want to get the welder out of the out of the way. And then if worst comes to worst, we have solitude pitch. Oh, they played the land out. Interesting. So they actually have nothing open here. Land? Sky clay. That's pretty good as well. Honestly, I think I just want to equip and pass. I could also put Urian into hand. I think Urian into hand is much better than anything else here. Now they just have Mana and Painter's Servant, which isn't too bad. They can just have that. Don't really want to trade. Nothing from our opponent. Attack with both. Take out Painter. Yeah, tough spot for my opponent. It didn't really draw into a whole lot. A few different lines I could have taken there. And maybe at times I was uh, letting my guard down a little bit too much, but happy with how it turned out. So we will see you as a 2-2 going into round five. Thanks. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Uh, not too bad of a hand. Turn one mum, turn two stoneforge. Pretty happy to keep this in the blind. All right. Plains mum pass. Kind of hope this is going to be like a, another fair strategy with this type of hand. Saga, okay. And at least for a... Oh, Saga Pass. Makes me feel like they have an Ancient Tomb. That makes it. Okay. Uh, I could attack here. I think I'm actually happy to attack. I don't think there's much that Mum saves Stoneforge from from a Saga deck that just starts on Saga Pass, so I think the one damage there is kind of free. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Bubble, sure. Okay. It's 
This is most likely going to be 8 cast. Like, we can't save the stone for forge from Ottawara anyway, so that's pretty nice. Just a pass. Land is pretty great, because now we get to put in Kaldra. Uh, I don't mind playing second mum here. And then we have Flickwist for the token. So they get a 4-4, then a 5-5, five, five, or a 6-6, six, six, because they obviously get something as well. There is a world as well where it's just worth uh, getting Batiskel into play. I could see like a spell bomb here. Shadow Spear. Okay. Not too bad. Like now we just hold the germ back on defense, and also hold up hold up our Batisco. I think pass with Baskell here is fine. attack with both okay now we just get to triple block this one block 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 I don't mind this Just in case I have to block, I'll hold back the construct. I didn't bait there with a recruiter because I didn't think I have the time to do that, unfortunately. We are just dead to the Thought Monitor as well, so it has to be Flick Wisp exactly, I think. But then they also just have the Shadow Spear to get over for the two, so I actually don't know if we have an out here. And we can try. Hmm. 
Yeah, no, because then they can just fly over. Tough. I can definitely see why uh, this is such a, a terrible matchup. It's just really, really quick. Uh, the Judgments and the Peacekeeper I don't mind. The Graph Digger's Cage I don't mind. The Mums don't do a whole lot, like Dismembers kind of a thing, but that's really it. I think this is probably the best. Surgical, not really. Like Trap, potentially. Probably more on the draw, but... Could see rest in peace. Could see dropping a Thalia. Yeah. On the play, which is nice. Reveal Yurion. Um, a little slow. Let's be honest, but I don't mind it, especially if they've kept a slower hand. We get to tax all their baubles. Obviously, without mums as well, we don't have as many uh one mana plays. Wasteland bauble here. Like Vile's probably our best draw just to stay on the curve a little bit. Okay. It's not too bad. Hit a bauble, but it will cost one anyway. Kataki would be pretty sweet in a uh, in the sideboard for this matchup. I think next time we're just going to recruit her for a Skyclave. Flick Wisp is just nice to hit Constructs, potentially. It's probably the one thing I actually wouldn't mind. This is Dismember, that's kind of a win as well, because we already have the backup Thalia. See recruiter. Caracas would be pretty fine here as well. I'm playing the Thali because they obviously wanted to get rid of it with the dismember, so I feel like it's pretty good, but they did just play a bunch of uh, zero mana artifacts, so you never know. Just an island, okay. Thought monitor's fine.
Okay. Does stop Emery. No great attacks here because they could just double block. Maybe I was supposed to play the Raftiger's Cage post combat. Ah, uh, it's only sorcery, of course. Unless it's a. Yeah. Playing Ottawa. Okay. Huh. Makes me think they have another one in hand. This is fine. I assume we see a force here with seven cards in hand, yeah. I don't mind playing Vile. I think Vile's doing probably more over the next few turns than just tapping them off mana because they currently have all the mana they need. Uh, Nathalia isn't really blocking, I'd rather probably just keep the Emery at bay. The extra damage does add up. Surely with six cards in hand they have something to do. Hmm. I guess now we get to attack with Thalia and then just wisp it. Oh wow, they're going to dismember it? Wow. I've already gone through three forces. Happy to hold this as well as an unknown with the violin play. no real reason to block here either because drawing into something like Jide is what I really want to be able to get to so oof size just GG yeah yeah that's gonna be it I don't think we have a great way to get back into that game, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, where are we? You're in and taxes. I think if anything, it would be worth having some number of, maybe going down on the amount of graveyard hate, like potentially not having eight pieces just for leagues, 
uh, and potentially having something like a, uh, a Kataki would be pretty sweet. Uh, and then also uh, Deafening Silence in some numbers, probably three, uh, if not the full four. Um, I could see like the second Judgment coming out. Rest in Peace is still fine. It's kind of nice to have like Surgical and Rest in Peace for the matchups where you don't want the full Ley Lines. Uh, Graph Digger's Cage I could see coming out as well. It's fine, but like, I think I'd rather just have more cards for some of those more 50-50 matchups, especially against combo to have turn one hate. Deck tech. But yeah, I think overall a, a lot of little micro decisions as well add up. Um, and to be returning to the deck, you're obviously gonna have those micro decisions that can snowball into losses. Uh, the main deck was pretty cool. I like the second Lash. Like that also makes me pretty happy to go down on, on further hate. Like maybe there isn't a need for either like the second Surgical or the first Rest in Peace if we have the second Sash in the main deck. But I think time would only tell and, uh, and reps with the deck. But hey, if you enjoyed this content, definitely consider following. Uh, I will have, yeah, a bit more DNT content coming out soon. Uh, hopefully do another uh, co-stream with either XJ Cloud or uh, Jason Murray in the future. But until then, hope you enjoy this league. We'll see you next time. Cheers.